Hey everyone, I wanted to talk with you really briefly tonight about um, five of the top mistakes that people make while on the keto diet. Um, you know, if, if any of you have been following, um, I know a lot of you have been participating in it, but if you've been following our macros challenge and um, how a big group of us are tracking all of our calorie, food, um, macros, which is protein, fat, and um, protein, fat, and carbs, our intake to see how close um, and realistic we are um, with, with our intake. So um, if you're following any of that and reading through some of the posts and the comments, you'll see some of the advice that I give over and over again. And so I wanted to talk about the top five pitfalls of the keto diet. And I'm guilty of all of these, and I still make mistakes uh, even today if you go look at my, um, my macros post. But um, but anyway, I'll make this pretty quick. So uh, the first thing um, that people uh, could probably improve on a little bit, um, and it's what get people the most in the very beginning and what might make people quit, is not enough electrolytes and not enough water. So um, as your body is um, becoming fat adapted, so transitioning from the state of using carbs and glucose for fuel to using fat for fuel, um, that process of ketosis um, actually causes you to lose a ton of water and even more electrolytes. And so it's really important to replace those, whether it's with supplements or with food. And when I say electrolytes, I'm talking uh, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Um, and I think I've posted on here before, um, I can't remember the brand, Trace Minerals, I believe. I ordered off of Amazon. It's just kind of like an overall electrolyte supplement that I use. Some people take um, those individual supplements on their own. Um, and then you can get some of that from, from the different types of foods you eat. So avocados are rich in, in most of those. Um, just heavily salt your food. Lots of nuts contain um, magnesium. And some of them um, even contain potassium, but a lot of keto-friendly foods don't contain potassium. But be sure to get enough electrolytes, especially in the beginning, and drink a crap ton of water. Um, more than you normally would and more than you probably feel comfortable with. But um, I would say the rule is half of your body weight in ounces. Uh, you know, so if you weigh 200 pounds, drink 100 ounces of water a day. Simple enough, right? Um, okay, so number two, that's electrolytes and water. Number two, I would say, is not getting enough fat. And I think this is where most people struggle. It's where I really, really struggle, um, is getting enough fat in your diet. And if you're uh, looking for a uh, macros that are a true ketogenic blend you're focusing on about you know five or six percent of your daily intake being um, carbs 70 to 80 percent being fat and the rest being protein and anyone who's followed and most of us have for years the standard american diet it's it's hard to wrap your mind around the idea of um, okay i need to eat a lot of fat in order to burn fat but that's what you're doing with the ketogenic diet um, you're teaching your body to use fat for fuel. So um, if you think about it, you know, a lot of people go to the, the place in their mind of, okay, so the least amount of fat I eat, the faster it's going to go to burning the fat off my body. And it doesn't really work that way. Your body still needs fuel to function. Um, it needs those calories and it needs those macronutrients to um, perform organ function to support all of your body's processes. And then in its more dormant phases, which is a whole other situation, then once you burn through all of that, everything that your body needs, then your body can start burning fat for fuel, the fat on your body. But you're teaching your body to burn fat instead of carbs, so you need to fuel it with fat. You, you know, it, it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around, but you've got to get enough of it. Um, you know, the, the ways that um, I find to, you know, when I have a really, really good day um, on, on what my macros look like. Um, the fats that I eat a lot of are avocados. I mean, it's healthy fats. You don't just sit around eating, you know, scoops of butter. Butter is important, but um, butter, olive oil, uh, avocados is a big one, um, coconut oil. I put bacon and beef in there, so a lot of people, they're still used to thinking, I need lean meats um, when I'm intaking any protein, and that's not necessarily the case on the keto diet. Don't go buying ground turkey. Get ground beef and get 80-20 um, beef. 
um, get steaks that are really marbled and have extra fat in them. So really focus on trying to get plenty of fat in your diet. Okay, I'm being wordy than I planned on. So um, number three is too much protein. And um, that's one that I struggle with too. And uh, it, it's one that it's, it's a little bit deceptive too in, in what happens when you get too much protein. So um, you know, we're also trained to think that protein is a really, really good thing and it's fine if you have plenty of it, but when you're on the ketogenic diet, it kind of goes against what you're trying to get your body to do. So one of the things that people don't realize is that when you overindulge in protein and you don't have enough fat in your diet, what happens to that excess protein? So what it's going to do, you may as well be eating a bunch of carbs and sugar because it's going to take that excess protein turn it into glucose and store it on your body like it would fat, uh, like it would carbs. It's going to store it as fat um, because it's still not enough of the right type of fuel for your body. Your body thinks, oh, I'm not getting enough fat. I'm not going to get enough food. So I'm going to take this protein and I'm going to turn it into glucose and I'm going to store it. So, you know, that's kind of the downside of protein. I really want to impress that upon some of you guys who – um, have been doing this macros challenge and have really struggled to eat um, the right amount of protein. It's moderate protein, not high. And what I've encouraged some people to do and what I've started doing myself is to try to find at least one meal a day where you're not eating meat. Focus on veggies, leafy greens, um, stuff like avocados. You know, eggs even have protein too. So when you're eating breakfast and having eggs, just, just think about that. And, um, you know, just try to really be cognizant of the amount of protein that you're intaking. All right, another one is hidden carbs. So, um, you know, w when I f first think of carbs, I think of the really starchy stuff like uh, pasta, uh, grains, cereals, uh, potatoes, all of those things, everything in the processed food aisles, um, all the sugar that's what I think of, but you don't think about the carbs that are contained in vegetables, and some of them are, are higher than others. And this is where tracking um, tracking what you're actually eating comes into play and why, why it's got a lot of advantages. And um, in the last week or so where I've really been strongly tracking, I've been a lot more successful in sticking to some of those goals. So I would highly, highly encourage you guys to download a tracking app, um, whether it's Carb Manager or um, the Keto Diet app. Some of you guys are using MyFitnessPal. Any of those work, but track what you eat and be really, really sticky about it um, and strict about it for you know a good week or two, so you get used. So you get used to um, what works and what doesn't, and um, where you're. Um, struggling and where you're doing really, really well. But I highly encourage you to download those apps and track them, and then you'll start to learn um, which vegetables, um, which non-vegetables even, which if there are any cheeses or yogurt. Yogurt is a good one to supplement sometimes, but you eat too much yogurt, it's, it's fairly high in carbs if you're trying to stick to 20 to 25 carbs in a day. Um, all right, that's four of them, um, and they've all been food-related. So the fifth one, um, is something that most people fail out with any diet, and that's patience. Um, and why that's important with the keto diet is because the first week can be really, really rough, as, as some of you guys have experienced. And I'm really thankful for the ones who've come to me and told me, I'm struggling, I'm not feeling well, is there anything that you would advise um, for me to do to help me feel differently? And, and what I'm talking about, I've posted about before, but... Um, if you've been reading anything about the keto diet, you've definitely heard of the keto flu. And what that is, is your body trying to figure out what the hell's going on, honestly. So it's, it's transitioning from that state of um, what it's been used to your whole life, of using carbs and glucose for fuel, to using fat for fuel. And in the process, it's, it's not an overnight perfect light switch change where suddenly your body's just fat adapted. It takes some getting used to. And it ties back into all those things I already talked about, too. Your body's suddenly losing all these electrolytes. You require a lot more water um, and some of those other minerals that are going to help you in that process. And if you're not getting them, you're going to feel really, really crappy. Um, you're going to have headaches. I had that when I first started, like really bad headaches. 
um, headaches, you're going to feel tired. Uh, you know, people talk about having all of this energy on the keto diet. And that first week, you're probably thinking, what the hell am I doing wrong? Or what the heck are those people on? Because I feel terrible. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of different um, symptoms. Some people even feel nausea um, in certain situations. But all of that stuff, it will pass. And it, it's avoidable if you really focus on your water intake and your electrolytes. And what I always tell people is um, to really up your fat intake. That helps alleviate some of that too. And salt everything. Um, but it, it's really important to be patient and understand that it, it is a process. Your body will become fat adapted if you stick to it. Um, and if you're doing all of the right things, it, it, it really, really will pay off in the end. Um, I haven't really talked to anybody who has been on the ketogenic diet for um, a long or a short period of time who doesn't feel the best that they've ever felt in their life, myself included. Um, it's, it, it's unreal, the, the health benefits that, um, that you can see from this diet. So, so just stick with it. Um, stick with it, and if you're struggling, ask me what's going on. I've, I've really helped some of you guys dig into... Um, some of your calorie targets, your macro targets. Um, that's another one too. The, the calories are kind of tied to it. Calories are really, maybe like my asterisk, a, a sixth target. It's good to have all your ratios right with your macronutrients, but if you're overeating in calories, it doesn't matter what diet you're doing. You, you're not going to lose weight if that's what your goal is. So, so be really cognizant of your calorie intake as well. Same if you're not eating enough calories your body does require a certain amount of fuel to function. And if you're under eating, it's going to have a similar result as if you're overeating because it thinks you're in starvation mode. So it's going to start storing fat and you're not going to lose any weight, even though you're not eating enough. Um, it, it kind of works in a counter intuitive counterproductive way to what you would think of not eating enough calories. But anyway, I digress. It's kind of a, a side note anyway, but my point was um, just, being patient with the process and knowing you're not going to be perfect all the time and coming to uh, resources to help you. Like I, I consider myself a resource, not an expert, not a nutritionist, not a doctor. Read a lot about it and I'm learning from experience. And, um, you know, so please come to me with questions and I can help you troubleshoot. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. Uh, these are the five key areas that people seem to over and over um, struggle with and what I struggle with myself. So I hope it's been, been beneficial to you guys and I hope you have a good night. See ya.